This meeting had got not gone to plan, and the discomfort was reaching suffocating levels. Baxter leaned back against his chair and crossed his legs. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel we're new here. My name is Death by Pony, and today we're hopping right back in to our life. So without further ado, let's go. That was going to be a hassle. But Terry and Miranda were allowed to tap out when the favors were done. It was already getting late. For dinner, takeout was ordered so nobody had to cook or clean another meal after hours putting little favors together. No complaints there. For a little while, the three of you could pretend the work was already over for real. No one mentioned the chaos that was waiting one room away. But when everybody was full, Jude wandered back into the living room, turned workshop. He heaved a sigh and tossed random pieces of trash into the garbage can. It was a drop in the ocean, and the entire living room was a mess of wrappers, paper, scraps, and unidentifiable crafting residue. Scott hovered nearby, his features drawn ap apologetically. The lighthearted atmosphere you'd shared as a team earlier in the day had shattered. All that remained was the fractured debris, and then it went beyond pre-wedding jitters. After months of planning, Jude had reached the point where he wanted the preparation to be over. He was worn down. Little victories weren't able to lift his mood. All he saw was what was still left. Meanwhile, Scott only seemed to be becoming more invested, more concerned over how it came together as the deadline approached. You debated having some kind of intervention about the friction, but weren't sure you could pull it off in a way that would actually improve the situation. We can clean this later. Let's play something. Sure. Scott blurted out an agreement instantly. If Jude had asked him to do a backflip for his entertainment, Scott probably would have in that moment. All right. Cool. Want to join? He tilted his head your way. You waved your hand back and forth. Thanks, but I'm going to go to my room. <laughs> the two had spent the entire day with other people. You weren't going to get in the way of them having some quality couple time together in the final hour. All right. Jude gave you a half shrug smile. He was on to what you were doing. Have a good night, James. Good night. You ho your host retired for the day happier than they'd been since your first showed up. It was a relief. You made your way to the guest room. The rest of the night would be yours. You all cove to finally let him know the situation. Got in touch with Baxter to inform him on the latest Baxter sighting. Let's see what Cove says. Because we are... After our sister, Cove is the next one who's very important. Cove was going to be at the wedding as a normal guest. He couldn't make it sooner to join the party planning committee. To be fair, he did arrive earlier for your mom's anniversary the last time you both had visited the area. It was your turn to go before him. But after what happened that day, you could use conversation with somebody who'd be happy to hear from you. While waiting for him to answer, you wondered what he would have done if he had been there to see Baxter himself. You got the feeling he would have made quite the scene. That line of thought was cut off by the phone line being picked up. Hey. Hey, James. Hearing that familiar voice brought a smile to your face. Immediately, Cove was one constant you could count on. How are you? Is everything going okay with the wedding? It was hard to say what counted as okay, given the uh, extenuating circumstances of the planning. But that wasn't the topic you called to explain. Came right out with the shock of the century. Jude and Scott's wedding planner is Baxter Ward. Um... Baxter Ward, uh, uh, wait. Cove rolled the name over his tongue, catching, rec catching the recognizable way it flowed. He said it before, but where and why? You gave him a second. That guy? He got it. Yes, that guy. Seriously? And he's just there? Yes. What are you gonna do? There was more than mere confusion in his reaction. Of course he'd be nervous. This was about the worst possible time for that guy to materialize from the ether. I'm going to see how it goes. Hmm. The noise didn't sound convinced, but he made an attempt to reassure you and himself. It's okay. I'll be there as soon as you've got Terry and Miranda. Whatever Baxter does, it won't change that. Thanks, Cove. Though, you don't need to worry so much. You could hear that the gentle smile in Cove's voice. If you close your eyes, you could convince yourself it was by your side already. Okay. After the dust settled from that bomb, you two spent time chatting on other matters. But all too soon, you had to let the conversation in. On the promise of seeing each other soon, you hung up. Getting even a brief chance to speak with Cove was heartening. Everything was done from the moment anyway. 
who finally had space to think about something other than wedding stories or Baxter bothers, and at least for a little while. Some time just for yourself is well deserved, and you managed to enjoy your relaxation before slipping off to bed. Then all of a sudden it was morning, and you were off to the proper second meeting with the planner. Everyone once again gathered in Baxter's office, waiting for him to arrive, and in turn, Jude and Scott were tense. And closer the wedding got, the further they were away from getting any semblance of peace. No matter how much they tried to unwind outside of the meeting, the moment they returned to this office, their discomfort skyrocketed. The way Scott's fingers fidgeted in his lap, you would almost believe that he was anxiously twisting the tension in the air. Miranda frowned, unable to disregard the words sending creases in her brother's brow. So... Hey, this rug reminds me of Baxter from before, anyway. She didn't elaborate on those not here before, and the awkward silence sent Terry into a fit of laughter. He pointed at the striped rug. Yeah. That's so true. It's literally the first thing Baxter like I've seen. What about his business cards? His phone was all black, too. His car is black and white, to no surprise. Well, yeah, he doesn't do that anymore. You looked at the floor skeptically. You sat quietly. You tried to ignore the conversation. His car is black and white, too, to no surprise. Ooh, Ooh and you get a point for that, James. Terry's at zero. Ooh. I sense when is this a competition? Since I awarded points. Terry nodded, and his mouth pressed into a hard line. Three of you only lasted a few seconds before bursting into giggles at the silliness of the situation. Randy looked at her brother and Scott, noticing the lack of input on the subject. She knew they would need a little context to join in on the joke, but neither even acknowledged her presence. The couple was too absorbed in their own worries for their stony expressions to crack from the herb icebreaker. She folded her hands neatly in her lap and made no further attempts to chat. You and Terry uh, shared a knowing glance and decided to also stay quiet, and Jude and Scott weren't in the mood. Shortly after, there was a knock on the door. Everyone snapped out of their thoughts. Bubbles and swivels towards each other instead of moving to answer it. Hello? Door opened and Baxter cheerfully stepped inside his office. His notepad was already open to a fresh page. Nice to see you. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you for waiting. A round of greetings bubbled up from the planning party committee. While Baxter moved through the room, he promptly sat on the rolling chair opposite the couch and clicked his pen out. Now that we're all here, we should we should begin. Let's go over where things stand and determine how to proceed next. Scott sat up, straighter in purple couch, and stiffly nodded. Judy Young, in contrast, slouched further into the cushion. All right. Uh huh. Hmm. So yesterday, an order was put in for your wedding cake. I can assure you, it will be ready on the day of the ceremony. Thank you so much. Thanks. Of course. Baxter carefully placed his pen on the notepad. His expression grew more serious all of a sudden. Speaking of the cake, I must give a small disclaimer. There is a tradition called cake smashing. I'm not sure if either of you are familiar with that. It merely means one or both members of the wedding couple saw the cake into the face of their partner. I strongly suggest you decide beforehand who, if either, will participate and to what degree of messiness. I cannot tell you how easily it is to sour the entire day accidentally crossing a simple boundary line. There's a sad history of partners finding, who find ignoring their wishes of their husband, wife, or spouse be funny realize far too late that it's absolutely not. Alarmed, Jude and Scott stared at Baxter. You were certain that neither of had even considered those possibilities. Uh, do you wanna? No. No, I don't. Do you? No. No way. Then can we not do it at all? We do have that option. Do we have that option? Certainly, we don't have to include any traditions besides your own. The couple simultaneously sighed in relief. They peeked at one another and shared an amusing grin. The first time either had smiled all morning, Baxter stole a moment to jot down a note. Glad to hear it. I'm delighted we're all on the same page. Moving right along, you worked on a guest favors and decorations, correct? Have you finished or will you be continuing with that task? We're done. What? Uh... We're done with the guest favors, but... Scott anxiously laced his fingers and pressed his palms together. In his lap, his knuckles turned white. Whenever he had anything to say about wedding plans, it became a trial of trying to avoid a disagreement. 
if it's fine to explain that what's on your mind that's where why we're all here there's no way to compromise or find a solution if you won't even have the discussion this surprised you baxter's ability to confidently and kindly handle issues in this kind of setting was admirable but also completely ironic you knew that he what he was like on a personal level and this was big this was big do's as i say not as i do kind of flag smiling thickly he def the defeat in scott's expression didn't seem so dire anymore he was more willing to take on the challenge with baxter on his side i am um, well i also want more decorations specifically the main thing for a reception we don't have that mm -hmm. centerpieces uh yeah that's what i mean meant we'd need to buy all the parts but if we kept the design simple then i think we could be done before the wedding after getting his thoughts out scott risked a glance at his fiance jude closed his eyes tiredly and looked took a deep breath let's go to the store it's gotta be done today that'd be cool awesome cool and i can't go without you if you don't want to it's fine no it's fine i'll do it Ugh. scott's joy vanishing jude didn't hide an ounce of the irritation in his voice he was forcing himself to go along with this rather than take any true interest he was making that fact crystal clear come on jude she poked the side of his arm with a forceful jab and jude shooed her off his frown worsened into a scowl i already said i'd do it i understand i believe you're right scott there will be room to pick out materials that can be arranged into a lovely centerpiece the process can be quite low effort and look wonderful so i'm taking it shopping for decorations will be the big task of the day scott watched jude a few seconds longer before answering he nodded slowly before the window of opportunity closes, is there anything that you would want to include? Jude, anything that you'd enjoy? It doesn't even have to be a typical wedding feature. There are no limits on what your own ceremony or reception can have. No. He folded his arms across his chest, and you wondered how deep Jude was about to dig in his heels. I don't want anything else. We're almost finished. Why add more on top of it? Randy sighed. Terry silently bit his lip. Uh, that was a track you'd gone down before repeatedly. It was always the same point of contention with Jude, but today, Scott was emboldened. Enough that he muttered his long-held-back grievances anyway. Why are you being like this? If you don't want... If you don't have anything to contribute, can you at least stop trying to take away what I think of? Jude's eyes snapped open. He swiftly pulled his shock and replaced it with distinctly unimpressed stare. You have been not listening to your husband, and now you're surprised? You've been shutting him down, and now you're shocked? I didn't take anything away from you, and I did contribute in the planning stage. We're past that. It's done. But since there's time we could... Come on. We've been putting this together for weeks, hell, months, in some ways. I've been to more parties than you, and I've planned more. You need to relax. Jude went to brush some back his curls and his fingers tightened and dug into his scalp instead bewildered his gaze flickered around the room scott doesn't even like parties i don't get his issue we have a planner now he can figure the shit out why even have him if we're still going to be spending every hour before the wedding working on crap jude flash of anger diminished as quickly as it had flared he redirected his attention to baxter apologetically no offense dude it's not your fault <laughs> None taken on my account. The pension Baxter's features uh, made you think he was fairly miffed on behalf of someone else. Continuing this trend of speaking directly to the audience, Scott offered his side of the defense. It's true. Everything Jude said is true. I've never planned a party, and yeah, I haven't been invited to many either. But we're people. We're the people making this one. I don't want it to be an awkward embarrassment. All of our friends and family are coming. I can't stand the idea that they'll leave wondering why the hell they even came in the first place. Scott began this explanation sad, but the longer he spoke, the more his own frustration grew. And having a planner doesn't mean we can drop everything onto someone else. The entire point was so more could get done. The, at least that's why I wanted an expert to help. I'm not interested in half-assing it, and if Jude doesn't want to do anything else, he doesn't have to. Aww. But all I've said against him is the entire time that he should stop making me feel guilty for not giving up. Jude chuckled 
in his own self-imposed pretenses and shot back directly at Scott. You shouldn't have to do anything either. It's That's my whole point. But if you keep taking on stupid crafting projects, then I have then, then I have to handle some of it for you. But it's not needed. Nobody cares that much. I care, even if I'm the only one. <sighs> oh, come on. That's not what I meant. Right. Right, Jude. It really sounds like you're invested. And that was the end of their discussion. This meeting had got, not gone to plan, and the discomfort was reaching suffocating levels. Baxter leaned back against his chair and crossed his legs. Let's take a pause to breathe and assess what's happening here. There's nothing wrong with caring about your wedding. But. However, it's truly a draining experience to create a massive, important event from the ground up. That's why we have planners. So there should be an understanding for that as well. Now, as the expert here, I must ask an important question. Both Dude and Scott nodded and their gaze just became glued to Baxter. Anything other than each other. Slowly, Baxter untwisted himself and leaped forward, almost lifting out of his seat. What are your opinions on bow bowling? Uh, what the hell? Bowling is a casual sport popular with almost all ages. Dude, he knows what bowling is. He's asking why you, why that was your important question. You can be telling me people have bowling at their weddings? Hmm. hmm. Baxter considered that remark with a smirk. He tapped the side of his cheek twice. No one has ever done that at any of the weddings I've helped plan, but I wouldn't be surprised if some couples out in this world had set up a game or two of lawn bowling for their guests. Hmm. Or perhaps even held the reception at a bowling alley. Interesting. Though it's not what I had in mind. I wish to invite the five of you to bowl with me today. Right now, preferably, my treat. Reflect, Scott pushed his glasses up. He was at a loss for words. I'll... I'd do it. Uh... What? I said I'd do it. You would? Jude answered, confused. Scott, further. He gauged the room and Terry offered him a thumbs up. Fun! I love bowling. Sounds fun. Bowling time. I don't get it either, but sure. Whatever you want, you shrugged. You didn't know what to do. Sounds fun. Agreed. Yeah. Terry put forward a high five that you uh, gladly accepted with a loud slap. Just about everyone was thrilled by the prospect of getting out of this office and stretching their legs. But Scott retained the final say. He tightened his already taut ponytail. All right, we can go do that. Excellent. Splendid. I know a perfect place. And that was how you ended up in the same exact bowling alley Baxter had brought you two years before. You followed your friends inside, holding that revelation close to your chest. It was fairly surreal to be there again, and with Baxter too, everything appeared just as you remembered it, even down to the shiny red seats. The almost otherworldly atmosphere that seemed to encompass every bowling alley remained intact. It was remarkable how little lights and sounds were so different from normal day-to-day -day life. Before anybody could further question Baxter's planning methods and what we were even doing there, you were at the front of the line. The group secured an alley, changed shoes, and were all set to start. Hey, how about we play on teams? Mine versus yours. Jude, uh, like always. That's where we're going to stop that one. This is about to get into a whole new thing. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, remember hit like, that way you know you're enjoying the content I'm making, remember hit subscribe, that way YouTube brings you back, here's what happens next, I won't take up any more of your time, have a good day, and I'll see y'all next time, bye!